Because I said so. It's Wednesday. Yeah. We don't do them then. Um, 163 and 164. Where do they live? There they are. Uh, 163, 164, we will see the right answers, then we will, uh, do our lesson, which is very, very quick, and then you will do your quiz, and then you will go home with a tiny bit of work to do over the four days. Depends on how much time you waste on your quiz. And how much time you waste when it's work time. Technically nothing. But that's only if you work diligently. And diligence is sometimes a teenager's weak point. Often diligence is a teenager's weak point. Often diligence is North American humans' weak point. Because... I don't know very many European humans, so I cannot make that generalization. I know infinitely more North American humans than I know of European humans. What's going on here? Why is Leighton there and Avapal back there? Did I miss a memo? Okay. Well, because at some point, her mom, at some point, somebody put H. Johnson in the... I don't know, Lynn, because I didn't do it. So I don't know.
interaction, would any grade 12 student interested in participating in the survey please come down to the computer lab now? Due to the fact nobody stopped me, I assume everybody got 100% on this page. 18.3 minus X? Yes, of course it is. I'm like, three times X. Ooh, that's a fancy stuff. I'm like, stuff. whoa, when did we learn this? Mm -hmm. I also don't remember what that was. Oh, boy. I can simplify it. Of course I can. That's how you factor it, but then that has a GCF. So you have to take it out. What do you mean you have to make something up? There's no making anything up. Yes. You just make something up? Well, it has to be correct. Any number that will work there. And every number that will work there is any negative integer who has frac factors that are one apart. So 1 and negative 2. 2 and negative 3. 3 and negative 4. So negative 2, negative 6, negative 12... Negative 20, negative 42, negative uh, 72, negative 110, negative uh, 39, negative 182. I could go on, but why? As long as they are one factor apart, they work. Same thing here. It's the exact same thing. I just changed the letter to see if I would fool anyone. Same thing here. Exact same thing. Here, slightly different. What's different? It's still going to be a negative out here. Yeah. Or Sorry. Uh, they have to be one apart. But it's going to be... You could have something else here, right? You could have had um, negative... Um, the difference is where the negative will be. Over here, the negative has to be with the larger of the two numbers, and over here, the negative has to be with the smaller of the two numbers. Right? But Actually, other way around. Wait, other way around. Like, what's yeah. On? The complete other way around. I assume that's a Jewish. Like, yes. Factor this for me. Factor that. R plus 3, R minus 2. So negative 6 is an integer that could go there because 2 and 3. Because 3 minus 2 is positive 1. So so could 4 and 3. Because 4 minus 3 would be 1 and 4 times 3 would be negative 12. So could 5 and negative 4. 6 and negative 5, 7 and negative 6, and so on and so on and so on. Infinite answers. Right? Same thing here, same thing here. Here it's different because the negative has to be with the bigger number. Right? So this one, you would use negative 4 and positive 3. It would still be negative 12, but the negative's got to move. That's what I'm looking for. What's different on 5? Nothing, except the factors have to be how far apart. How far? Two. two apart. And since it's a negative there, the so if they got to be two apart, two and four, which one gets the negative? Oh. No, the four. The four. Yes. What about five and seven? Who would get the negative? Seven. Seven. What about 21 and 23? 23. 23. And so on and so on and so on. This one. It has to multiply to 6. What are my only options? 3 and 2. So what would that make that? 
five or one and six. What would that make that? Seven. Could it be negative three and negative two? Sure. So that would make that plus or minus five. Could it be negative one and negative six? So that would make that plus or minus seven. What about this one? It has to be one and ten or two and five. So it has to be plus or minus eleven or plus or minus seven. What about this one? This one's trickier. What do you notice about that? Oops, that should have highlighted, of course. What do you notice about that and that? They're both perfect squares. But since that's plus and plus, it's not a difference of squares, is it? Because that's a plus. So I can't do plusy, plusy, minusy, can I? Well, that's how you guys talk. I would say I can't do addition and subtraction. You go, uh. Sarah, Sarah says take away. She yeah. says that. But I also second that. So if that one has to, but if I'm going to factor this, that would have to be 2x, yeah? And since it's plus plus, that would have to be 3y, yeah? yeah. And then it would have to be, again, 2x plus 3y, yeah? Which would mean the middle would be 6xy and 6xy, which would make that 12 is the only number that can go there. If that's the area and the area of a rectangle is LW equals area and that's area, then, 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 oh, this is an extra long one. What if it, yeah, what if it's just, it just finally gave up? Oh, never mind. <laughs> then the length times width must be x squared plus 7x plus 12. Length and width are both factors, so I must need to factor that, which is x plus 3, x plus 4. Wow. Your sarcasm is noted and cared for not, much like you guys don't care about mine. I know. I'm almost hurt. Oh, okay. And then I remember you guys are 15 year olds. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one. How are you going to calculate the area of the shaded region? Well, that's the area of the big rectangle minus the area of the little rectangle, right? The big rectangle is length times width 5x minus 4 times 3x plus 5 minus the area of the little rectangle, which is 2x plus 6 times x plus, you think that's a 2? Yeah. I'm going with 2. So then we do this math to get 15x squared plus 25 minus 12 is plus 13x minus 20 minus 2x squared plus 2x plus, or plus 4x plus 6x is plus 10x plus 12. Then 15x squared minus 2x squared is 13x squared. And 13 minus 10 is 3x. And negative 20 minus 12 is negative 32. And that would be that answer. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I assume once again, because nobody questioned me, that everybody either did it right or is copying down the last two because you had no idea how to do it. Even though you did know how to do it because you know that area is length times width, you know length times width has to mean L and W are factors, and you know that factors of a trinomial have to be two binomials if it is going to factor. So you did know how to do it, you just didn't. Van Bizzle. 
Mysticism. Mysticism. Word. Is it? No. We are going to do... Oh, I lie. We are doing page 166. All right. Uh, I need to look out upon the class for a moment. What's wrong? Because whenever I teach this, I always have a couple of international students that learned how to do this a different way, and then they get all angry. Because I didn't learn to do it that way, and then they get mad at me, and I'm like, I don't care. Do it however okay, way you want. That's pretty much par for the course. There are three ways of which I know to do what we are going to do today. One is the way I was taught when I was your age that is difficult to understand because it deals with the concepts involved. You guys would have no problem with that, which is why I'm not going to show it to you. The second way is a way I found when I was researching how to teach this because I kept teaching it the way I was taught and the way I learned it. And my students kept going, so I went and looked up a new way to teach it and I stole it from Australian math teachers. And it's weird because it goes down the drain backwards. Which I have just found out is a myth. It is a myth. It doesn't actually happen. It only happens with giant bodies of water. So the gyres in the ocean are going the other way in the Southern Hemisphere. So you know how like tropical storms on one end that's so like, yes. They go one way and the other and they go the other way. Yes. What would happen if they cross the equator? They don't. But that's what, the point. That's why one's called a typhoon and the other one's called a hurricane because it depends on the way. Anyways. What? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Oh. No, I understand what she's talking about. What if they like went in that direction? They can't. Why not? They can't cross the equator. That's the whole point. Oh, why not? One, because of the way these. Because of the way the magnetic field and the way the Earth spins and all kinds of things that aren't part of Math 10. That's a better answer than Where do we get from Australia? Hurricanes and typhoons. Well, if you weren't playing on your phone, you would have heard the whole conversation. I wasn't actually. I was actually listening. Uh-huh. So anyways, I stole the idea from Australians. And what makes it slightly better is that it uses the method that you already know for factoring trinomials, okay? Now there is a third method that has started being taught after I went to high school and it was taught, often it is taught to kids that go or from other countries. That method I do not like because it relies completely on guess and check, which is, in my mind, a stupid way to do math if you can do it exactly. Yes, guess and check works if you have unlimited amount of time and know nothing about math, right? You could get 100% on every multiple choice test if you had the unlimited time to guess and check every single answer because the right answer is on the page, yes? That's why we do not give you unlimited time on a multiple choice test. So I do not like teaching that third way because it is guess and check. I've had student teachers come in here and I've shown them my other ways and they're like, wow, that makes way more sense because you don't have to guess. I know, I was never showed that way. I know, it's because you're 21. Okay, so I'm not going to show you that way. But if you have been taught this to factor these trinomials with a leading coefficient before you got to me, then by all means, use the method you know. But if this is news to you, trust me, what I am about to show you is infinitely better than the other ways. Okay? Okay. Okay. Now let's make this real simple on ourselves, as always, by reviewing what we already know. What is that? That's a factor. You're darn tootin', that's a factor. What's that? A factor. That's a factor. You're darn tootin', that's another factor. It's a factor. 
And what are you going to do with those two factors? You're going to multiply them together because that's what factors do. And you're going to get the answer x squared plus 10x plus 24. Yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Now, if none of this were here and you just saw that and I said do something with it, you would factor it thusly. You would say, I need numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 10. And then you would say, you wouldn't write it down. You would in your head go, well, is it 1 and 24? No. Is it 2 and 12? Could be, but it'd have to be a minus. There's no minuses there, so it can't be 2 and 12. Is it 3 and 8? No. Is it 4 and 6? Ah, it is. And then you would write x plus 4 and x plus 6. Right? What? A factor tractor. <laughs> that is not a word. That is not a. I would never use that phrase. That sounds like something a teacher would use to come up with some cute name for something to do with factoring that isn't what it really is. And you know I hate that. Have I. Do I ever have those cute, silly little names and stories for this? Do I ever talk about how this X is a fancy X and this X wants to get away from this Y because this Y is ugly and it wants to go to the prom? Do I ever... Do I ever do that? No. So why would I start now? Right? That's also why I call you Sam. Not the guy that sits in the corner and sometimes acts like a Muppet when he's excited. Okay? Because your name is Sam. All right? You're not that guy that acts like a Muppet sometimes when he's excited. Well, he is. Well, that's not what he is called. Right? No, he doesn't. He looks like Sam. So it's the Muppets look like Sam? A factor tractor! <laughs> so, that is what you have already brought to the party, yes? All right. So, looking at this new scenario, what are you going to do? That's a factor. And that's a factor. Yeah? Yeah? So what would you do there? Well, you'd factor tractor them and you'd plow them together with foil. And you would get 6x squared minus x minus 2. Correct? Excellent. Now, talk to me about the similarities between that and that. Armand? It's amazing how many Armands are in the room. Excellent. We started with, and I'm dizzy now. That took a long time. We have an x squared, an x, and a constant. Lovely. So we have both our trinomials, yes? Yeah. Excellently done. What else do you see? Go ahead. There is, what? Yeah, but I asked for the similarities. That is a difference. So, Back to the similarities. They are both trinomials. They both factor into binomials. And you will notice something about the last two digits. Ooh, ooh, 
Taylor? They still like add together and still multiply. And they, they still s- do the trick and everything. They still multiply together and they still add together, don't they? Yes. Right? So, knowing all that stuff, the only thing that has changed is that this number is six times bigger than that number, yes? So, in this case, right here, if we wanted to factor the trinomial, we needed numbers that multiplied to 24, didn't we? In this case, if there was no 6 there, we'd want numbers that multiplied to 2, right? But there is a 6 there. It's 6 times bigger. So what do you think we need to factor to here? Numbers that multiply to what? 12. Because it is 6 times bigger. Everybody cool? All right. So what are the numbers that multiply to 12 but still add to one, negative one. It is three minus four, correct? Yeah. So if there was no six there, it would be x plus three, leave a space, and x minus four, leave a space. Does everyone agree? Yeah. Excellent. But it wasn't three and four that we needed, was it? We needed something that was six times bigger than that, yes? Right? So these aren't the right factors. They're only the right factors if I've multiplied everything by six. So what would make them the right factor? If I had to multiply them by six to know it was three and four, what must I do at the end to make sure I have the right number? Divide by six. Would you ever leave that factor? Fraction. Of course not. You would write x plus 1 half. Would you ever leave that fraction? No. What would you write? 2 thirds. Right? Now, what do you notice? Oh, my word. Right oh here. Oh boy. Holy cotton nugget, whatever the Lord said. Oh, my spit. Wow, how'd you know that? It's a spit. It's like we are about to laugh. So our, our answer becomes. Does that work every time? Every time. Oh my our answer becomes 2x plus 1 and 3x minus 2. Now, stop for a moment, and I'm going to give you the reason why. Okay? Don't write this down. This is just explanation. Right? Right? That's what it was, yeah? Okay. Now, right now we're saying that multiplies, yeah? But is there an equal sign there? There isn't, is there? Right? So if we were to multiply this out, what would we get? X squared, yeah? Plus two-thirds X, yeah? Yeah. Minus one-half X, yeah? Yeah. Minus... Two sixths. Yeah? Everyone agree? Okay. One third and one half don't go together, do they? That is x squared plus four sixths, right? Minus three sixths, right? Minus two sixths, right? X squared. What's four thirds minus three thirds? Three, four sixths minus three sixths. One sixth x minus two sixths. Yes? How would we get rid of those sixes? We would multiply by what? Six. Six x squared plus x minus two. I learned something today. 
6x squared minus, oh, I had it backwards. It was plus one half. But you know what I mean. Can you go back down for a second? I just want to see, like, oh. That should have been, this was a plus. Yeah. Wait, and so this was the minus. Was but the math still works. Mm -hmm. oh my Everybody with me? That is why this works. Now, so, if you're happy with that, you're all, you've all seen why it works, you've seen how to do it, it builds exactly on what you already know. Am I permitted to move forward or does somebody in the room need to see one of the other methods? Stop for a moment. You are only allowed to put your hand up if you do not understand what I just showed you. If you get this, then use this. If you are curious because you like math, then by all means, go and look up another method to do this. But I do not wish to use class time if everybody is comfortable with this method. Yes. Everybody good? All right. Oh, no Jar Jar Binks talk. Right? Because the only thing that should have happened to Jar Jar Binks was somebody should have chopped him in half with a lightsaber. Yes, Jar Jar Binks is the Sith Lord. I've read that meme too. He's not. That'd be great though. I'd watch it. I'd like, I just would love Star Wars even more if he was. That's just such a great idea. There's two more episodes. It's possible. It's not. It's not. It better not be. Because if it is, Disney is never getting another nickel out of me. All right. Let us move on, cabbages. If there was no 20 there, you would need numbers that multiplied to what and added to what? Multiplied to 10 and added to 33. But there is a 20 there. So I don't need numbers that multiply to 10. I need numbers that multiply to 200 and add to 33. What are they? Is it 1 and 200? No. Is it 2 and 100? Is it 1 and 200? No. Is it 2 and 100? No. Is it 4 and 50? No. Is it 5 and 40? No. Is it 8 and 25? Yes. 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 So that is B plus 25. But it's not plus 25. It's 25 divided by 20. And it's B plus 8. But it's not B plus 8. It's 8 divided by 20. Would you ever leave those fractions? Or would Mrs. Bad Crumble be very angry? You might not get your gold star that day. You would still get a silver star. What would it be? So five over four. What would this be? Two over five. Where do the denominators go? They go by the B. They go with the B. Now, would you ever... Hand me in a piece of work that required this much thinking without taking one second to check it over. Yes. Of course you would. You do all the time, every single one of you. Sure. Even though you have numerous seconds to check over every piece of work you hand in to me because almost never do I give you a deadline. And even when I give you a deadline, I'm still such a sucker that I say, does anybody need more time? And three of you put your hand up and I give you more time anyways. <laughs> How do you check it? Is 4 times 5, 20? Yes. Is 5 times 2, 10? Yes. If the edges are right, the middle's right. Done. Check it. Check okay. Let's do the next one. If there was no 3, what would I need? You would need to Multiply to 10, add to 13. But there is a 3. Yes, so it's multiply to negative 30 and add to negative 13. What is it? Is it 1 and 30? No. No. Is it 2 and 15? No. Yeah. yeah. What? It's not 10 and 3? No, because 10 and 3 would have to be negative 10 and negative 3, which would multiply to positive 30. 
It's oh, not it's ten and three. Sad trombone. It is two. I just found out that that was a trombone that made that sound. Really? Yeah, I didn't know what it was. I've always known the sound. But I never knew it was a trombone. I know now because my wife's cousin plays trombone. And for some strange reason, we were on a camping trip. And, you know, most people bring maybe a guitar for around the campfire, maybe a harmonica, maybe a ukulele, something stringed. Dude brought his trombone. Which was interesting around the fire. Anyways. It is at which one's positive? The two. So plus two minus 15. So it is S plus two, but it isn't S plus two. It's... Two over three. And it's not S minus fitting. It's fitting over three. Simplify. Does that simplify? Yeah. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Sorry. I was going to say. Three S plus two. Does that simplify? Yes. Negative five. S minus five. Three times one. Is that three? Yeah. Two times negative five. Is that negative ten? Yeah, sure. You betcha. Yeah? Yeah. Now, I'm telling you right now, number three has a trick in it. It's full of jiggery pokery. Yes, you can. What are we going to do, Alicia? We're going to take a three out. And we're going to be left with 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. Now, what are we going to do? Now, we're going to do that trick. Now, we're going to do that trick with which part? Use its name. Use its name, Claudette. Yes. We are going to factor the trinomial. Can we forget about the three? How many of you are going to forget about the three? A whole bunch of you. How many of you are going to lose a half mark on your test? A whole bunch of you. Three. What do I need? I need to multiply to what? Six. And add to what? Negative seven. What is it? What kind of six and one? X minus six over what? Two. Two. X minus one over what? Two. Simplify. Does that simplify? To what? Three. Does that simplify? No. Three. X minus three. Two. X minus one. Which two? Yeah. One well, we need it. It's not six and one, Leighton. It has to divide by two because we had to multiply by two to get the six. Wait a Why is it multiplying to six? Wasn't it nine times six that you're multiplying to? No, dude, because we took the three out at the beginning. Alicia said, you can take the three. And then I said, yes, you can. What are we going to do, Alicia? And then she said, you can factor out the three. And I said, yes, we can. Where were you for all that? <laughs> we had a whole big thing. She was all quiet and spy about it. And then I was all like, no, loud and proud, sister. And then she was all like, yeah. It was all on, yeah. And then Claudette over here said she was going to factor the thingy. Which sounds a little naughty, in my mind. What are we doing here? Uh, no. Okay, no, we can't. No, we can't simplify. We're eight so times five. five. It's forty. Negative forty. Negative forty. Negative forty. Negative 40. Negative 40. Negative 40. Whatever. What is it? Uh, wait, uh, wait. 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 Uh, what? Simplify. Yellow. It's yellow. T. Yeah. P plus 2 over 8, P minus 20 over 8. Simplify. Um, oh, that's one fourth. One fourth. Uh, oh, I can't really oh, read the uh, uh, negative, 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 negative 5 over 2. 5 over 2. Where did the exponents or the uh, denominators go? They go 4p plus yeah. 1 
and 5p minus 2. My, sorry, other way around. Amschumann said it was 5 over 2. Yes, you did. It's 8 times 5. Over 8. So it's what? 4 goes into that, 5 over 2. So the 2 goes to the front, minus 5. There we go. And we check. Is 4 times 2, 8? Is 1 times negative 5, negative 5? Yeah, sure, you betcha. Everybody good? You're right, I did it. Is x times 2x, 2x squared? Is negative 3 times negative 1 positive 3? If I distribute that 3, and do I get 6, 21, and 9? Yes. Okay, you gotta check it though, please. Now, am I done? I would appreciate it. Am I done? Are you happy? Well, yeah, but there's, thank you. Are we dead the page or the equation? Are you sure? You sure? Yeah? Should I do the, should I show you guys how I was taught to do this? All right, this is how I was taught to do this, okay? Okay. Now, first of all, we would factor that, right? I'd take out what? Four. Four. And I would get 6h squared minus 5h minus 4, yes? Six. Minus 6, yeah. Now, what we were taught to do was we had to still do 6 times 6, so I still need to multiply to 36, and then we had to find the factors that added to negative 5. But we had to rewrite this this way. 6h squared. And of course, it's 4 minus 9, right? 6h squared plus 4h minus 9h minus 6. Still negative 5, right? Yeah. Then we were taught you have to group this and factor it. So 4. What's in there? 2h, right? So it would be 2h, and then in there would be 3h plus 2, yeah? yeah? And then what's factor there? Minus 3, and that would leave in there 3h plus 2. Plus two. Oh, yeah, the and then yeah. there is a common factor, and there is a common factor. So the answer was 4, 3h plus 2, and then the other factor, 2h minus 3. Okay, because that was probably how he was taught in high school. I don't like that. Great, use it. Don't care. Couldn't care less. Then don't use it. Okay. I'm glad we're in agreement here, Lindsay. Now, the third way I refuse to even show you because it's guess and check and guess and check. No. Guess and check makes me want to take a ruler and stab it into my eye. I'll hold the ruler for you to see what you do it. And then you can tell us. Everybody good? Yeah. All right. I am shutting my pie hole. I'm shook it, but I'm good. Now, when you finish this page, you will notice at the very end, 14, 15, 16, and 18, full of trickery and jiggery pokery. But you know how to do them. Right? So, I'm about to give you a quiz on GCF and trinomial factoring. Yeah? Yeah. And when you're finished that quiz, you're going to work on pages 160 blah to 160 blah. Yep. And then we'll save 168 for Monday. Woo, I can't wait. Okay. Desks clear. Will you be writhing in anticipation? Have you seen that movie? Anybody get it? Rocky Horror Picture Show. Dr. Frankenfurter. Anticipation. You see it in theater and you throw toast at the screen. Yeah, yeah. I saw it when I was at your guys' age. There's a part of this movie where there's a wedding and they have a toast. And... They yell a toast and everybody has toast and they throw it at the screen. And then there's another part where they throw water at the camera and everybody has a bucket of water and they throw it all over each other. And